Hi, my name is Isabella Kong, and I'm the author and illustrator of this picture book, No Fuzzball, coming out August 4th, 2020 by Orchard Books Scholastic. And in this video, I'll be sharing and talking about how I created the cover for my book. So if you've been following me on social media or YouTube, you would know I am a big watercolor and ink fan. Um, I paint with those mediums almost on all of my projects. And for this project and book in particular, I paint with watercolor. While I am greatly in favor of traditional mediums, I do use digital tools all the time to um, make things faster and easier um, on myself. From the sketch stage, uh, I can move things around, duplicate things, or change its scale very easily digitally, especially with a Cintiq. Um, to color studies, I always do digital color studies on big major projects, um, and including every single page of this book has have a digital color study. And if you're interested, let me know. I, I might show you some of them. As for the final illustrations, I normally use digital more as a cleanup tool or touch-up tool, uh, but I do fix the details on two things, which is Fuzzball's whiskers and brighten up her eyes digitally. So without further ado, let's get started. So here you see are my first set of thumbnails that I sent to my art director. And I did about eight sketches, um, and I usually don't submit that many for every single illustration I do, but this is the cover, and covers are so important. There's a famous saying, don't judge a book by its cover, but it's famous because we all do it. We all judge books by their covers, unfortunately, and um, it's our first impression. First impressions are important, and as a book cover, you're trying to attract audiences in a bookstore, and a good cover is attention grabbing and hints at the story without giving away too much. So it's a very delicate balance. And that's why I submit so many thumbnails for the cover. Just trying to explain what a design would look like is so much harder than just drawing it out. So for this first round, I really wanted to focus on Fuzzball. I want her to be center stage. I want her to be the star of the show and without a doubt, the main character. And I also want to show her relationship to the crown. Um, she is the queen, uh, so th there is a lot of different body gestures and uh, interactions with the crown. And at the end, we all chose number five, which happens to be my favorite at that time of fuzzball bursting through the page, kind of inspired by those old cartoons where the character will burst through the screen and uh, talk to us and break the fourth wall. So I kind of want that vibe going on there. So after we are all in agreement on which sketch we like to pick, my art director and my editor brings these sketches as well as everything about the book to the marketing meetings. And the marketing team want to try something new. So the marketing team wanted to show Fuzzball in her environment a little bit more and um, show off her um, amazing sense of style and her raw destructive power. So here you see me trying different positions, uh, different placements. Um, I wanted to highlight the armchair or couch because, you know, Queen has a throne, right? Um, I really, really liked the bottom left one where she's being super cute with the toilet paper which wraps around to the back cover and shows more of her uh, raw destructive power and her capabilities um, and for the last thumbnail the bottom right one I wanted to show a completely different perspective uh, using camera angle looking down at her and giving a little bit more limited view of her surrounding because at that point, I was feeling like the other three is kind of giving away the story a little much. And it's it's a messy, it's, it's a lot going on. So it's not as clear and eye-catching as the cover. But, you know, I got to draw it out and sketch it out for me to come to that conclusion. And thankfully, uh, the rest of the team also feels the same way. So combining what we love from the first round of thumbnails and the second round to come up with these two new sketches, showing Fuzzball closer up, making her center stage, busting out of a box, 
um, with destruction to paper and ribbons, which guides us to the back cover and shows all of her favorite toys and royal presents. And finally, the top sketch got approved by everybody on the team, and I moved forward to the final sketches, where I uh, cleaned up all of the drawings and spelled out all the details, uh, getting it ready to paint. As usual, I will do a digital color study before moving forward to the final painting, mainly because I use traditional materials and especially watercolor. If you make a big mistake or you decide to change a color completely, it often means you have to start all over again. So I have to have a pretty good idea of my game plan before doing any watercolor illustrations. All right, so now let's move on to the actual painting. So for this cover, it's a little different than the inside illustrations. The internal illustrations, I would do the whole piece on watercolor with some digital touch-ups. Uh, but for this cover in particular, I was requested to paint certain elements on separate layers. Um, and that, in traditional terms, it means on separate pieces of paper. And here you see a picture taken right before I began painting the background for my cover. On the top corner, I usually load up my iPad with the color study, and in this case, it is the layer with the background on it. I have all my tools ready, my watercolor paper is securely taped onto a board, and I use uh, Arches cold press watercolor paper. I usually use 140 pound paper. I don't really need to go any thicker than that. Um, and if you pay closer attention, I actually already pre-mixed a puddle um, of watercolor, the violet uh, color that I want to use, because I know my first layer is going to be a wet on wet layer and time is of the essence. I have to achieve as much as I can while the paper is still wet. What I mean by wet on wet layer is essentially wet paint applied to wet paper. And here you can see me applying clean water to the entire surface of my watercolor paper and saturate the whole area as evenly as possible. Once I'm sure of that, I usually start painting from the top of the piece. Uh, the reason I do this is because my drafting table is at an angle and I am doing this painting at a tilt, um, letting gravity do some of the work and pull the pigment down and spread it out very nicely, very evenly. While this is generally the most time sensitive and technically challenged stage of each painting, I love it. I love it so much because you create all these beautiful watercolor textures and effects during those moments and it's actually a very fun and flexible stage too. Uh, as long as the painting is not fully dry, you can very easily lift stuff, you can change your mind, you can, you can manipulate the painting. And voila, here it is completed and drying, waiting to be scanned. And while that is drying, I move on to painting all the foreground elements as well as my queen, no fuzzball. Anyways, um, here is the setup once again. Um, this time I have the full color studies loaded up. So here you see me putting water down on fuzzball. It is exactly the same wet on wet technique, but just on a smaller scale. Um, but for fuzzball, I have to be super careful on the edges. I have to do her beautiful, majestic, royal coat justice, and I have to show how fluffy and fuzzy she is. Um, so I'm very, very careful with the edges. I'm always flicking outward um, to show the hair uh, texture. And after I'm done with fuzzball, the queen, the star of it all, um, I paint the rest of the elements on the cover. Um, I actually did not record myself painting that part, but you get the picture. Um, and this is what it looks like finished. And this is what it looks like after my art director put in all of the design elements. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested, I have a ton more videos, time-lapse videos on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram. I hope you have already fallen in love with my one and only queen, No Fussball. The book comes out August 4th and I can't wait for you to all get to know her and read all about her.